All right, let's talk about moving the forearm. Everything that we already did, it moved our arm, the humerus, and now we're going to move the forearm at the elbow. So let's look at, obviously, if we want to flex the forearm at the elbow joint, we're going to need a forearm flexor. And who is that going to be? Hopefully you guys are like, yeah, we're all over this action. We know that it's going to be biceps brachii. We've already learned that biceps brachii has two heads. We've seen it. We know that the long head has a tendon, a long tendon, that actually travels up through the intertubercular groove of the humerus, stabilizing the shoulder joint, and attaches up here at the supraglenoid um, tuberosity or something above the glenoid fossa, and that's where it attaches. The short head of the biceps brachii is medial, and it actually travels up and attaches to the coracoid process of the scapula. So we have two different attachments. You can see that this medial attachment of biceps brachii, it, it doesn't look like that's going to be stabilizing anything in the shoulder joint, but the long head, the tendon of the long head of biceps brachii definitely looks like it will hold that humerus in place. They both share the same distal attachment. And you can just look on this visual and you can see that what bone are we attaching to? We're attaching to the radius. Can you see that this is my lateral radius? And so then this has to be my ulna. So the biceps, the distal attachment of biceps brachii is um, the radial tuberosity. And think about the radius. What kind of movement does the radius do? It does this rotation thing. And I want you to play with Carlos when you get into lab, pronating and supinating Carlos, and see what happens to the um, tendon, the distal attachment of the biceps brachii muscle. It is a um, forearm flexor. But biceps brachii is also a super powerful supinator, super supinator. And that, do it. Make your, like, pronate your hand and palpate your biceps brachii, squishy little guys, and then supinate. And what happened to your biceps brachii? It totally contracts as you supinate. So the act of supination, your biceps brachii plays a big role in supinating. That's cool. All right. Um, we also have two muscles that sound really similar, and they are brachialis and brachioradialis. Brachialis is right here, my friends. Brachialis smears onto the humerus, onto the anterior aspect of the humerus. And check it out. It actually attaches down here to the ulna and brachialis, hmm, it attaches, I don't think we learned this part of the ulna, did we? This is the trochlear notch. I don't think we did the coronoid process. I hope we did because brachio, even if we didn't, now we are because brachio, brachialis, which is this guy right here, brachialis attaches to the coronoid process of the ulna. And you can visualize, dude, really? It's smeared onto the humerus. It attaches to the ulna, the coronoid process of the ulna. That thing, that's your primary forearm flexor. This one, brachialis, is your, your main dog when it comes to flexing your forearm. So what the heck is brachioradialis? Well, look into my eyeballs and know that brachioradialis is one of my favorite muscles. And the reason is because not only is it, does it function in forearm flexing, which is why we're talking about it right now, but it also separates all the hand flexors and hand extensors in your forearm. So be, um, pay attention to brachioradialis and where it is. You're going to find it on the lateral side of your forearm, but it does come up and it smears an attachment to the uh, humerus. And I'm just going to show you, this is a humerus 
and you can see that this is the lateral side, I mean the medial side of my humerus. Here's my, my brachioradialis on the lateral side of the humerus. This is where brachioradialis attaches to the humerus. And then it's distal attachment. What? Look at how far down its distal attachment is. Guess what that little bump is that it attaches to on the radial side? It's actually, it attaches to the styloid process of the radius. And it is, like I said, it's a, a flexor. It flexes the forearm. Okay, one more. Are you good so far? I think that that was everything. The last one that we have is our only lonely forearm extensor. And there's one muscle. And take a deep breath because it has three heads which is why it's called triceps brachii. Triceps brachii is on the posterior surface of your forearm. It attaches to the posterior surface of your humerus. It also has heads that attach to the scapula. Awesome. I'm telling you right now, I have never found a fantastic dissection of triceps ever. I've never seen um, a dissection that shows me really clearly the differences between the three heads of the triceps. So we have glumped them all together, and you get to know triceps. So the proximal attachments, just know humerus and scapula, and that's, that's good enough because obviously their different attachments are going to facilitate different movements. Our primary movement of triceps is forearm extension but you are going to know the distal attachment. What do you think? What, what would you, where would you attach the primary forearm extensor? Where would you attach it? You better attach it to my favorite bone ever because this thing will mess you up. That's your olecranon of your ulna. And if you ever want to take an olecranon to the temporal bone in your skull, I can help you out with that. That's it. Those are your forearm movers. Now let's do hands and fingers. And then we get to do the inferior limbs.